Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're gonna go over tying five really key knots for sailing, rock climbing, tree work, whatever you might be interested in. And then we're gonna build a spreadsheet of those five knots. And then we're gonna look at some of the properties of the knots and how strong they are. So it's, it's gonna be a math video, but also a really very practical math video. You never know a knot could actually save your life. Okay, to start with, this is an old rock climbing rope of mine. You could um, tell it's worn out because you usually retire a rock climbing rope when you pinch it like this and the radius is really small. It's also usually retired after a certain amount of time. If your life depends on it, you probably want to treat it like your life depends on it. So this might be a 10, 15 year old climbing rope, maybe even older. It's a 11 millimeter rope diameter and I think 150 foot long. They make them differ lengths now, usually a little bit longer. So we're gonna take an arm's length rope like that. We're gonna find that point right there. We're gonna use electrical tape and wrap a little piece around it. Not a little piece, we're gonna wrap it fair, pretty good. I probably wanna wrap as tight as I can get it. Maybe go back once or twice. And I'm really pulling it tight. We're doing this and so when we cut it, it won't unfray. These are nylon ropes. So we're gonna end up melting it. So I have a pretty good amount of it tied there. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife, always cutting away from myself. And then I'm gonna use a lighter, making sure I don't get any of this melted plastic on my fingers at all. Let me put the camera over my shoulder. Once you have it wrapped with tape, grab a piece of scrap wood, don't do this on the tabletop. With your X-Acto knife, you're gonna cut right down the middle. Right, nothing ever goes in the path of that cutter. And then once you have it cut, you can see the core in the side there. I'm gonna use a lighter and melt that in. go. Then we're going to do that to both ends. Knot number one, the bowl end. First thing you're going to do on a bowl end is just lay that rope out in front of you. Have this end coming towards you. And then you're going to take a bite. And that bite is going over. Then you're going to take that end and you want to pull this back this way. So the way you pull this back is you go up through the loop, around, and then back through. And you want to do this as you're watching it and tie it quite a few times. Maybe re rewind the video and watch it again and again. So that's a bowl in. This is called the tail. The minimum is usually five times the length, no, five times the diameter of the rope is the minimum length of your tail. This is not a life support knot. If you were going to use it for life support, you would tie off that tail in another safety knot. Okay, knot number two is called the double strength bowlin, and it actually keeps the rope a lot stronger. So you give away a lot of tensile strength in a rope by putting in really tight radiuses. So a double strength bowlin, knot number two, double strength bowlin, you take a, a bite. Then you take a second bite up over the top and then everything else is the same. You take your tail up through, around, and back down through. So that's a double strength bowline. And again, the advantage of a double strength bowline over a regular bowline is your radiuses are not as tight so you do not lose the same strength as you did with a regular bowling. 
So that's knot number two. Knot number three is an alpine butterfly. Alpine butterfly, you take a loop out of your rope, you twist it once, and you twist it a second time, creating that little gap right there. Then you're going to take this loop down through here and push it up through that hole there. And that's an alpine butterfly. Really important thing about all knots is both inspection and dressing. So dressing means you get all the pieces to lay really nice and flat, like that. So n there are no crossovers, again, giving away the strength of the knot. So that's dressing a knot. And then inspecting it is more important than anything before you're going to use it, you want to make sure you tied it correctly. So you really want to inspect it as well. Knot number three, the alpine butterfly. And then knot number four is a figure eight. And there's a lot of ways to tie a figure eight. One is you could just tie a figure eight on a loop like this. And then you're going to take that loop, bring it down, one more around, and up and through. You can see you have some crossovers there, so you want to dress it by getting it to all lay flat. And there's a figure eight. Dress and inspect. I still have a crossover. Fix that. So that's not number four, figure eight. The other way to tie a figure eight, too, is you could tie it on a single strand, say. So you take that loop, go, go around and around, pull this up and through. So there's a figure eight. Go around something to tie in, and then come back through and follow this through. So there's a figure eight. And follow it around and through. Pretty common knot for tying into a harness. So you could tie it with a loop in it, or if you want to include something in there, you tie the figure eight and then follow it back through. You want to dress and inspect. My tail is too short, so I need to lengthen that tail. So I'm going to bring this down. Lastly is a fisherman's knot. And a fisherman's knot is good for a lot of things usually joining ropes together. So I'm going to take those two ends. This is going to be my fisherman's here. It goes around, around this side, and back through. And then I'm going to use this tail and do the same thing, around and around and back through. And then you could cinch those together. So that's a fisherman's. More common than a fisherman's is a double fisherman's. So we'll call this knot number five, a double fisherman's. We'll go around once. It's called a double fisherman's for a reason. Around once, around twice, and through. And I could use that as a cinching knot because the rope will slide through there. So there's a double fisherman's, and I'm going to tie another double fisherman's on this end. One, two, and there's my double fisherman's on this end. And then I'm going to pull, dress it, inspect it, and pull it tight, and it should lay flat. So double fisherman's good for joining two ropes. It's a cinching knot, it's cinching onto itself, tying into a carabiner so that it doesn't slide around. Uh, a double fisherman's good. All right, so those are our five knots. Um, first thing you want to do is cut your rope. Second thing you want to do is learn those five knots. And then the third thing you need to do is practice those five knots every day to make sure they're registering in your brain. The next step is we're going to go over to my computer and put them in a spreadsheet. Uh, and start looking at some of the properties of these knots. 
Okay, here I am in Google Sheets. Um, you just get, it's a Google product. It works exactly the same as an Excel spreadsheet, but it's on your Chromebook. So you could just go to the waffle here and go down to Sheets and open one up. You wanna start a new doc. And then the first thing you wanna do in Sheets is title it and then figure out your sharing of it. Um, my first row going across this way is a titled row. So that's what's gonna say what's in the column below it. So again, these are rows, up and down are columns. This is called a cell, this is A1. And I'm gonna type in here, type a knot. Bolin was our first knot. Double strength Bolin, our second knot. Alpine, whoops, Alpine butterfly. Our third knot, figure eight, our fourth knot, and the double fisherman's our fifth knot. One thing I do like to do is I like to highlight all of these cells beyond where I'm going to be working. And I go up here and I put my data in the center of the cell. The next thing I like to do is I highlight the whole top row and I bold it to say it's a title up above. So you're going to have your type of knot. That's your first column. The second column is the number of times you have tied this knot. So you just got to remember how many times you practice it. Um, and when you do, update this column. Percent of strength, you're gonna get this off of the chart. I downloaded this off of the internet. It was a naval table of strengths of rope after a certain time. So that's right here. You can just get this off of the video. Um, Alpine butterfly after being tied is 75%. So, I'm gonna put that in as a decimal, 0.75. Uh, Bolin is 60%. Down at the bottom here, double strength Bolin is 80%. So right here, we're at 60%. 80%. And we have a figure eight and a double fisherman's. Figure eight, not on a loop, that's us, 80%. And then a fisherman's knot, 65. So this is 80 and 65. So that climbing rope, um, if it were brand new, would probably break at a 6,000 pounds, say, six, 7,000 pounds. It's kind of dependent on a few things, both the length of it, how long the fall is on it, how much um, elasticity the rope has, but we're just gonna call it 6,000 pounds. And this is really gonna be the power of a spreadsheet right here. So this is gonna be strength of rope after the knot is put in. I'm gonna click right here, strength of rope after the knot's put in. And the way I enter an equation is I start with an equal sign. And we said 6,000 pounds of force multiplied by the, how much you compromise the rope strength so we're gonna multiply it with the asterisk above the eight. And I don't type in this number, I actually just click on that cell and it picks up that cell and I hit enter. And I can see 6,000 times 0. 0.6 is 3,600 pounds. Actually in this description, we should have units. So we'll put in there pounds. So I could autofill it or I could just click on this and bring them all down. And it'll actually take the equation from this one, 6,000 times that cell and it'll put that equation in here. It'll take 6,000 times that cell. So you can see, depending on the knot, you have a lot of different outcomes for the strength of the rope. Uh, I was gonna go on and count the number of radiuses in the knot. So I don't know if you can see this too well. Here's my Alpine butterfly. I counted this as one radius, two radiuses, three and four. The loop is not included. So I put in four radiuses right there. On a bowl in, I'll call out one radius and two radiuses. On a double strength bowl in, I would actually double that loop right there and, and actually call it three radiuses. I'll let you figure out the figure eight and the double fishermen's and fill those in. The point of this video is to learn five knots, really practical skill. You got to practice them every day. Also understanding that when you tie knots, you compromise the strength of a, of a material of the rope. 
by how much, and you keep track of that data in a spreadsheet and a quick overview on building a spreadsheet, and we'll do more with spreadsheets later. Right now, make sure you get your rope, learn your knots, enter that data in the spreadsheet, and keep track of the number of times you tie every knot. All right, well, this is Colfax Math, the Practical Math Channel. If you're new to this channel, think about subscribing. If you like this video, hit like, and please comment below if this was worthwhile or not. Thank you.